Okay, let's talk about the HESI exam and specifically we're going to talk about the mathematics part of this uh, exam. We're just going to practice a, uh, a skill, just basic equations that you're definitely going to want to have um, you know, as you take this exam or prepare for it. So if you're watching this video, I assume you know what the, or are interested in the HESI exam. It basically indicates that, hey, you're a nursing candidate, right? You're, you're um, taking the HESI or the HESI A2. I guess there's no more different nomenclatures for it. There's also the TEAS exam or the RNEE exam or I believe there's another one, an NET exam. Basically, they're nursing exams uh, for acceptance into a nursing school, okay? Kind of like, a, I guess, an SAT or ACT exam for college. You have to apply to nursing school, and these particular exams are really, um, you're looking at uh, your academic kind of background, right? Your core skills in science and math and other things like that. It's different than another exam out there, the NCLEX, um, this is when you are going to become a registered nurse. Totally different. This is uh, my understanding pretty much when you've uh, completed your nursing program or you're trying to get your license. That's that's different. Okay. What we're talking about here is just simply entrance into a nursing program, a nursing school. And as you probably well know, it's becoming more competitive um, to get into nursing schools. At least that's information I have through my research. Um, that and it's it's kind of crazy that that's the case, but I, I mean obviously I'm, I'm glad they have high standards. But there's a definite shortage of nurses out there, and the the future demand for nurses are just going to grow, grow, grow. So um, you know if you're uh, you know looking at nursing as a career path, and I assume you are if you're watching this video, then you know your future, you know I would like to believe is going to be very bright. However first steps first, right? You're going to have to get into get yourself uh, accepted into a, a um, really good nursing school, nursing program, and then go from there. So this exam, okay, along with other things that I'm sure you have to do to get accepted, is going to be important. Now, math is a, an area where uh, a lot of people tend to uh, struggle. Maybe that's new, not you, but even if you did very good in high school math or um, college level math, you still want to review and take this test uh, extremely seriously. So we're gonna, I'm just going to look at one sp specific basic fundamental math problem that you should be able to do if you expect to do well on the HESI uh, math exam. Now, um, or the math section of that exam. Now if you're struggling with math, we're going to go through this um, in a second. If you're struggling with math and you, you find that you like my teaching style, my, back, my background is I'm a math teacher, teach from uh, sixth grade all the way through college. If you like my teaching style, um, I offer a full HESI math test prep course. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. You can check that out. Also, I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out as well. But with that being said, Let's take a look at this basic equation problem. So just to kind of spice it up, I threw in a, uh, some fractions, but this is a very basic level problem. Um, essentially, again, me teaching from sixth grade on, I would be able to expect like a, an eighth grader, seventh, eighth grader to be able to do this problem. So maybe take a moment, see if you can do it. If you can't do it, listen, it's not the end of the world, but it's certainly a big indicator that you're going to, <laughs> you know, you got some work to do for you. And if you can do it successfully, don't get overconfident because this is a very basic, um, you know, problem, you know, but that's good though. All right, so let me go ahead and just pause here for a second. Okay, hopefully you pause the video and you knock this problem out real quick. I will say this, if you did get the, if you find that you got the solution correct, that's excellent. However, if your work is really sloppy, then that's not so good. So I'm going to show you what your what the answer is and how you should have approached this problem. Okay, so um, I don't want to turn this into a complete lesson on equations. This is that's just a, too huge of a topic to talk about. But I will explain um, uh, the the steps and concepts in this problem. All right. So first things first, here I have parentheses. I have a number outside of the parentheses. That means I have to use the distributive property to clear this. So I'm going to have to take this 1 half and I have to multiply it by this term and by this number. Okay. So 1 half times 3 fourths x. So how do we multiply fractions? Well, it's 1 half 
times three fourths, right? So when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators and the denominators. So this is going to be three eighths. In this case, it's going to be three eighths x, okay, is what this term is going to be. And now I have one half times this negative one. So one half times negative one is simply going to be a negative one half. All right, so if you got that so far, excellent. So now let's just go ahead and write out the rest of the problem. So this is our where we should be at right now, our first step. So we have 3 eighths x minus 1 half equals 1. So now what I want to do is get all my numbers on the right-hand side of the equation, all my variable terms on the left-hand side. So I just want this on the left-hand side of the equation, and I, I need to get this negative 1 half. I need all my numbers over here. So how do I do that? Well, I need to add, I need to get rid of this negative 1 half on this left-hand side by adding 1 half to both sides of the equation. Okay. Now, you may have, you know, your, your work, as long as it's neat and clear, you may have a little, stylistically, you might look a little bit different than what I'm doing here. As long as you're in control the, of the solution, the process, then, then you're okay. Okay, you, in other words, you might have wrote the 1 half over here to the one side. What you should not have done, okay, a big X, big warning here, is say, oh, I don't like fractions, so I'll convert my fractions to decimals. Now, in this case, you would be okay, but this, this, that can cause a lot of other problems, so do not do it uh, for a couple of reasons. One, you need to be able to work with fractions big time, and two, you may not have a calculator available uh, to you. I don't know the specifics for this exam, again, on the calculator policy, I don't have that in front of me right now, but it doesn't make a difference. You need to be able to solve these problems just using your basic fundamental knowledge of fractions. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing here is kind of adding down in a column manner, all right? So you're thinking to yourself, all right, 3 eighths x plus nothing is just going to be 3 eighths x. A negative 1 half plus a positive 1 half is just zero, right? They kind of just cancel each other out, so there's zero. I don't need to, I don't need to write like plus zero here. It, it just goes away, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to remove this negative one half from the left hand side, but I need to balance the equation, so it needs to show up on the right right hand side. So now I have one plus one half. So let's write that this way: one and one half. Okay. So if you've gotten this far, or if you're able to get this far, then that's outstanding. All right. Now here. This one and one half. What I want, really want to do is see this as a uh, mixed. I'm, I'm sorry. This is a mixed number, but I want to see it as an improper fraction. So I'm going to take two times one plus one, and that's going to give me three halves. So one and one half is the same as the fraction three halves. And you'll see why I want one and one half written in that way. So this is going to be three halves. All right. So if you got this point. That's fantastic. And if you didn't, and you were like, oh, struggling, but you understand ex everything I'm saying here, and you're like, okay, I get this, I get this, then that's excellent. That just shows that you can learn math. And I can tell you, I'm just telling you right now, even if you don't think you can learn math, you can excel at math, right? It just takes, it takes a good program, a good teacher, the willingness to put in the work and effort and just follow, a, um, you know, the right steps that the, that the teacher lays out for you. Um, and you're going to learn, okay? So this stuff is not instrumental, but it does take, you know, time to build up your math skills. So now I want to solve for x. So here I have 3 eighths x. Really, what I want is just x, right, all by itself. I want to know what x is equal to. Now, x by itself, there really is a 1 in front of x. So 1x, we don't really write the 1 in, in algebra. We just say x, okay? It's kind of redundant. So we want the, a 1x. So or x, right? So how do I do that? Well, if I multiply this side over here by 8 thirds, okay, let's see what happens. 8 thirds times 3 eighths, you see here I'm going to get 24 over 24, which is 1. So what I've done is simply taken, I've taken this number, this fraction in front of the x, and I flipped it upside down. It's called the reciprocal. Okay, you see that right there? And I did it specifically because I know that when I multiply these two guys together, I'm going to get 1, okay? 
But here's the deal. If I do this on the left-hand side, I have to do it on the right-hand side as well. So it's another major concept in equations. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you've got to do the exact same thing to the other side. Okay, so you have to keep the equation in balance. So I want to multiply both sides then by 8 thirds. And I did that specifically because I need a 1x here, or x, right? So now when I multiply 3 8 times 2 thirds, I'm going to get 24 over 6. Okay, so what's 24 over 6? Well, hopefully it's 4, right? 6 times 4 is 24, so x is equal to 4. And that is our solution. Now we can always go back and check this. All right, let's 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 check this real quick. Our original equation. Yeah, let me actually erase this here. So here was our original equation, right? So one half times three fourths x minus one is equal to one. Now x we we think or we believe is equal to 4. So let's plug this in here. So for x, I'm going to replace the x with the 4. So it's going to be 1 half times 3 fourths times 4 or 4 over 1 minus 1 is that equal to 1. Okay, so 3 fourths times 4 is what? 3, right? Or 12 over 4 or 3. So 1 half times 3 minus 1 is that equal to 1? Well, 1 half times 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. What's 1 half of 2? It is 1. Okay? So it checks. It checks out. So you can always, in algebra, check your solutions. And you won't have a lot of time to do that. There's a lot of other techniques and stuff you want to keep in mind. I don't want to get into right now, but those are kind of separate test-taking strategies. But this is definitely you know a level of math that you need to be really comfortable with so let's kind of wrap up this video here so hopefully you did really good right and even if your uh, process was a little bit different as long as it was neat and structured and whatnot and you felt good about it and you were in command about everything you were doing then that's fantastic okay that shows you're on the right track again if you want to check out what's in my uh, course I have a lot more than than fractions I really you're gonna really get a heavy-duty review of uh, high school level mathematics a lot of stuff that you're definitely not going to need as you know it's not gonna be relative to you is in your nursing career but can will certainly strengthen your your math skills for the HESI um, uh, math test for sure so I'll leave the link again in, in the description of this video um, Again, I have many, many YouTube videos, so hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, definitely would appreciate a thumbs up. And let me know um, what you think, you know, like what, what's going on in your career. I mean, are, are you are you finding it, uh, you know, more competitive? Are you surprised with your, you know, the steps you have to take uh, to become a nurse? I think, you know, uh, nurses, I, I know, just personally knowing nurses, they're very hard working individuals. And, you know, uh, great, we're grateful. We should all be grateful to um, know that there's people out there that want to work in the healthcare field uh, because they touch all of our lives, you know, in one point or another. So I wish you all the best, all the success, and, um, you know, do not let math stop you you know, getting from where you need to get uh, in terms of becoming a nurse. Okay, so thanks for watching and have a great day.